Hey up troops, A little tin here again with another video and this time we're going to be looking at... Hello? Is this on? Oh we're back, sorry I just lost signal there, must be a signal jammer in the area or something like that. This time we're going to be looking at mute. Now we're going to go through five site setups. Four of the site setups are off site, which sounds daft because that's not a site setup. Well it is. We're holding different areas of the map. So, for example, on coastline, we're going to be using the hookah billiard site to defend, but we're defending the other side of the map in VIP as mute. And there's a couple of sites, or well, a couple of maps, where attackers need the other side of the map to win the round. They don't just go for the site. You need to take map control. You can't just let defenders have other areas of the map. You need to have map control. And we're going to try and stop that with four of these site setups. The other site setup is entirely on site. So the maps we're going to go through are Nighthaven, border skyscraper coastline and outback so not super popular maps there's some in there which are slightly different you know not everyone's into outback and night haven and border there's some good ones in there there's something a bit different because those maps come up and ranked all the time it's not always clubhouse villa oregon cafe all the time so four are off site one are on site enough waffling let's get stuck into it okay so site setup number one is on night haven labs we're going to be looking at server command now a lot of people reinforce this wall. If you've seen my How to Defend Night Haven Labs video, please don't reinforce this wall, and we're going to show you what you can do as mute instead. What you do on this side of the map is up to you, around here. This wall here is becoming an increasingly popular way of attacking because it's right next to the door. We're going off topic already here on site setup number one, but that door is outside. This is site door. But people still seem to push from the other side for some reason, so we're going to try and learn how to defend against that. So, first thing you want to do is reinforce the right-hand side of this wall make a rotate just to the left of it try and make your rotate a bit cleaner than i just did you want to reinforce these two walls so for your site setup on the northeast side of this map you need three reinforcements one two three i also recommend keeping a spare one because we might reinforce this later in the round if we have to back off a little bit like you do on uh, albo on oregon so we're gonna put a mute jammer on this wall i'm gonna put a mute jammer on this door just on the angle here like this Yes, I know it's exposed to the door, but it's going to do its job before anyone can see that down here. By the time the enemy gets here to shoot the mute jammer, you should be killing him anyway. Then don't forget this drone hole. People forget about this all the time. Stick a drone, uh, sorry, a drone, a mute jammer there. Now, third, uh, sorry, fourth and final mute jammer. For me, I normally put it under the window here. And you know that this whole side of the map is now locked down. No drones can get through any access points through the breach, through this door, through the drone hole, or through this window, and you can defend in here. Now, you can stand up on the hop-up if they manage to get this wall open, and you just play in here for as long as you can. Another line of sight you want to make is feet holes here, and the reason you do this is now you can watch the hop in. So there's a window just over in the corner of meeting here, just there. There's a window there, so anyone that hops in there, as long as this is still closed, you can play here, wait for them to jump in. Remember, don't aim at the feet when they jump in. I know that's what you can see, but aim higher up. So you're still going to be able to see the feet in the crosshair, but aim higher up so you hit head height. And you're just going to hold on to this side of the map. If things get a bit precarious, if this wall gets opened, you can still try and play a little bit more aggressively around here on the breach. It's a bit risky to try and do so, but you can do. But if things get real bad, tuck yourself back in here and reinforce in behind you. It's a bit like playing elbow on Oregon. Like I say, you're going to hold this for as long as you can. Odds are you're probably going to get turfed out of here at some point, but you want to just delay them as long as you can. Another massive tip as well when you're playing here is at the start of the round, just hold this angle, right? If you hear the barricade go, don't just hold this angle and hope to get a kill. The reason you're holding this angle is within the first 30 seconds of every round, I guarantee you kill two drones coming through that door. As soon as the round starts, just look here, kill the drones as they come across. There's always two that come in. And just bear in mind, it's super easy to get a pre-placed drone up here and up here. So just make sure there's no pre-placed drone there at the start of the round. Other than that, hold on to the northeast side and pray. Pray that they push this way, because otherwise all your side setup's gone to shit and nobody pushed this way anyway. But they will. This side's becoming more and more and more popular to push. Uh, and as I say, if you panic or if you get pushed out of here, it's not the end of the world. Get that reinforced, and then hold from there. Spot on. We're on coastline now then, defending hookah billiards. However, we're not defending hookah billiards. Well, we are. Bomb sites hookah billiards, but that's not what we want to defend. We want to be over here in VIP. This is one of my favorite things to do recently with Mute. I absolutely love this hold. 
it's really successful. It works a lot of the time, and you completely shut the attackers down from getting control of this side of the map. So I've only used two reinforcements on the VIP wall. I'm going to start putting the mute jammers down now. One on the VIP wall. One on this side of the wall to Hall of Fame. One on the door itself to Hall of Fame, but this is a little bit tricky. Don't put it here because it's really obvious the mute jammer's there and it can be shot if someone's prone under the door there. It's really easy to destroy. It, make it a little bit more difficult for them. This still can be destroyed quite easily, but it's a little bit more difficult. Face the uh, guitar case on a bit of an angle like this and try and get it underneath to that extent. And you'll see that it does still go all the way to the other side of the door. You can get a slight pixel angle on it, but it's much easier to destroy if it's there. You've then got a spare mute jammer. And what I do with the fourth mute jammer, is I change it up each time. Sometimes I try and put it in this area here and it's going to stop anyone coming from uh, the drone hole on 90 and a bit of theater door. You can move it a bit further over than that. This area here. That'll then mute jam the drone hole and the, uh, the theater door. And I tend to do that most of the time. Sometimes I'll go and put it on 90 itself. Um, around here. Depending on how I'm feeling, sometimes I'll put it there. I don't really think it does much there because the radius only comes out to about here, so you could just go around it if you want to. I think on the drone hole's a good spot. From there, all you're doing now is holding VIP. What quick lines of sight to note is the kitchen window, which is around here. You can see there. So I make a shotgun hole there and I watch this in the first sort of 20, 30 seconds. A lot again, the Ash, Nuke, Iona players are gonna try and get an easy way into the map, and kitchen window is normally a bit of an easy one when defending hook and no one's normally down in kitchen that often. Hall of Fame door is where you're going to be most of your fights. You've got the mute jammer to prevent anyone coming in there. And even if they do come through there, you're not going to get rid of this one as well. You can make a line of sight like this if you want to. And then you can hold into theater door. Just be aware that if you're now holding Hall of Fame like this, you're now exposed to, uh, to 90. So you've just got to be careful. You don't... Yes, you do want to make lines of sight to be able to defend certain angles, but you also don't want to make lines of sight to make it easier for the defenders. Just a couple points of note. Once you're in VIP, you can't come back out this way. I always barricade this window at the start of the round. And now I can come out here, right? But if this window's open, you can't come out of that door because some absolute gremlin is going to be sat on that angle there or this angle here, usually a nomad, just sat watching this door. And even though here you think you can't be seen, you absolutely can. Like, absolutely. You can see, like, all the way into sort of here. So you, you can only see ankles here, but if you're playing in this area in VIP, you've just got to make a note. I make a mental note of this, the edge of this cabinet. Like, I can't go past that line. Use this one as well and just think, right, I can't go past there. So once you're in here, if you do want to come out, you're going to have to go all the way around to theatre and round to top main. But this is also a good flank as well. Because you've held this side of the map for so long, and if they can't get you out of here, which is generally the case because it's almost impossible to drone, what you end up doing is getting free kills because people lose the drones. They can't be bothered to get this wall open. You'll lose the drone here or here. And if you're just holding this, you're going to get a sledge or someone who just walks in and you go, oh, thanks very much. It's, on, it's a free kill every time. And then from here, if you want to, you can then push around to luggage and top main. Just listen for air, Nomad air jabs. You see air jabs on this door all the time. Because you, you can place the air jab on here from um, aqua window. So you can open this window and from the aqua window there you can put an air jab above there. So just listen for air jabs when you get here. Obviously watch for aqua balcony. And then push in and flank around that way. Or just get all five kills while you're defending VIP. I absolutely love holding that. Again, in high reload, the attackers are going to want to take other parts of the map and not just go for aqua, aqua balcony and hooker door. You do still get that sometimes, but... If you're holding this area of the map, it's key, in my opinion. And yeah, Mute does a really, really good job of it, especially just on his own. It can get tough sometimes if they use an EMP on this wall and they do open this wall. You can retreat back to here and play around here. But it's, I mean, at this point, it's pretty precarious. So if, if that does happen, you tend to just have to go, well, I'm playing my life. I'm going to try and get aggressive and get at least one kill before I die. If I see this getting opened, what I'll tend to do is come and hide here and just tuck in. And you can hold a bit of the breach here down towards Hall of Fame door, but just pray that they misdrone you or something. Because if this is open as well, it, it can get tricky. But yeah, that's the way I like to play uh, hooker billiards on coastline. Welcome to Border. Welcome to Armory Archives. And welcome to Holding Office slash Fountain as Mute. So I've done the reinforcements for you. We need five for this setup. One, two, three, four, and five. You're going to need two for the main breach, which is six and seven. And the other three can be used around CCTV to try and manipulate that as well. So, first things first, lines of sights and rotates. Now, you don't see this very often, but trust me. 
I can rotate here. And make a rotate here. Now, why do we make these rotates? One, if you lose armory side, because you're playing this side, right? If your team loses armory side, and you, and also, by the way, I'm going to completely change subject here. Never reinforce this wall. I think it's a bad idea in almost all circumstances. You've, because all you can do is just push in and plant on the on the wall here, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't shoot from this angle, and even if you could, someone from the bre uh, breach is probably holding you. The only thing you've got to be careful of is you'll get people who make this line of sight from here. They'll try and make that line of sight and watch the cross there, so you've really got to watch for that. We've completely gone off topic, but the amount of games I see people lose because they reinforce this side of the wall, the attacker just comes in and plants tight here. And yes, you can see for them from below, but not every operator has C4, right? Anyway, so, the reason you make this rotate is because if you do lose that side of the site, the only way of getting back to this side of the site is through this door. However, and there's absolutely zero cover for coming through this door. It can be holding from anywhere, and you see it all the time. Holding from this side of the bomb, holding from this side of the locker, or holding from this locker as well. You've got to come through that door. However, with this rotate... You can now come through pretty much unscathed. You can't be seen from any of those angles. And if you're crouched, your head is beneath this as well. So you can crouch right up to this and no one can see you. So it just means you've got another way you can peek the door, go, oh. And then pop up here and do what you need to do. So you make this rotate. The second rotate you make is here. And the reason you do this is the whole point of the east push, if they do push east, is one, they're either going to try and plant around this area at the back of archives, or they're going to try and open this wall and plant the iron the bomb here. So, by leaving this wall soft and creating a rotate, you you've got the idea here that nobody's going to get into this area. You're locking this down. So making this rotate means if they do start pushing this way, you can come back through this way in C4. You don't have to come through a door, which can be held from here. You can come and come through the rotate in C4 if you need to. It's just easier to get back in, in my opinion. Also, if no one's going to take it, if they do take this part of the map, and this wall does get opened, somebody can prevent the plant behind the bomb from here. They don't have to push all the way in. Imagine this was reinforced and they get behind the bomb. You've got to push all the way in here. Either push around the back or push through this door. And it's just dangerous to do. Having this rotate here just means it's easier to get through. If you lose this area and that rotates there, then you've made it a bit trickier for yourself. But anyway, enough about that. Where are the mute jammers going? You block off this double door with a sneaky double mute jammer setup. So one mute jammer right up against this printer here. And if I get around quick enough, you'll see where the circle is. You can see it goes all the way across that rug. You want to come through this side. And if I can get around quick enough again, you'll see it goes to this side of the rug. So, all the way across this rug is completely mute jammed. They won't be able to get a drone into this area. They might be able to leave one at the door. You can try and put it a little bit further down. You could put the mute jammers like here. And here. And it would cross over at the door a little bit better. So you could do that if you want to. I always put them there. It probably is better to put them further down, to be honest with you. We also then reinforce these three walls. If these three walls get open, it's a little bit trickier. So you ideally want a Cade or Bandit. You don't, Bandit's not really going to be ideal because Bandit's going to use two batteries on the main breach. But you can try and mute this off yourself, but you don't really want to be using mute jammers for that. Second mute jammer is going to go on this window. If I could put it down, that's embarrassing. Your third mute jammer is going to go on the balcony door. Now, you could put it here, which protects it from getting shot from the door. However, it's still wide open to this window. Sometimes I try and sneak it tucked in here, but it's easier to shoot. If you stood there, you can see it poking out a little bit still. So I'll have to put it there. Yes, it can get shot from here pretty easily, but it is what it is. Now, with your third, uh, fourth mute jammer... Oh, no, wait, sorry. We put four down. We used double on the door. You, we haven't got a fourth mute jammer. We put all four down. If you don't put one over by that balcony door, I was going to say you can put one just here behind this wall to make sure this doesn't get opened. If they open this wall and Ace throws one here, this is your only cover in this room. So you, you want to keep this reinforced as much as you can. Now, there is a little thing. We're going off on a big tangent here, and I'm sorry for, sorry for all this information. You talked about mute setups, and I'm about to tell you about Thermite. But if you're playing Thermite, you can open that wall by opening the triple wall as well. If you place your Thermite charge right here in the corner, there, when the Thermite charge goes off, it will also open a portion of this wall as well. So if you ever need, if you ever as an attacker, you want to push east, put your thermite charge on this side of the wall on the other side, and it'll open here as well. And from here, once you've got this little setup, obviously we shot the radio early doors, shoot the radio. You chill here. 
and you play around here, you need a mute jam, a mute jammer, we're mute. You need a, uh, a Jaeger ADS or a Womai disc magnet thing, ideally, around this area, because you probably will get grenaded out of here. But you can hold the double door from here, you can hold the breach if it gets opened, you can hold the window. It's a real nightmare to push somebody out of this area. You've really got to focus a lot of utility and two or three guys to try and push them out. Now, if you end up dying, you end up dying. The idea of this, and it's similar to the hold on Night Haven, you're away from sight to an extent. You're just trying to delay them as long as possible. If need be, if you find that no one's pushing this way and the push is coming from the other side, you can go back into sight. You could even reinforce this if you wanted to once you know this side of the map's clear. It's up to you. A quick little angle that's worth learning as well. If you're playing mute, you're going to have a shotgun more than likely. Open the hatch. Open the top right corner of this wall. And you can watch the hop-in from this window here down in Tellers. A lot of uh, Ash players, Iona players, are going to try an entry in this window here because most people don't hold down there. It's like free and easy to get into the map. So you can hold down there as soon as they hop in. It's a really nice angle. You can also make a little line aside here. And hold bathroom if anyone wants... Uh, that's the wrong way. There we go. If someone wants to come in bathroom... And unlikely that someone's going to be in bathroom because you're going to kill them if they jump through the window here. But all this floor is soft. So just remember that. The beauty of playing here, talking about soft floors, is this is not soft floor. So you're not going to get grenaded from below here. It can be tricky. It can be precarious. But if you can hold this end of the map and the push is trying to come through here, it just makes it a nightmare for the attackers. On to Skyscraper then and Karaoke Tea Room. However, we're absolutely nowhere near this side of the map that we're going to defend. So ignore the two bomb sites being here. We're going to go and defend over... It's still to defend this site. But we're going to go over this side of the map. A common thing for attackers to do, again, is to gain control of the map by pushing from this side. There's far more easier ways into the map this side by having the single wall here, the samurai window, the main breach here in office. It's much easier to gain control of the map coming this way, even when you're attacking karaoke T. So, reinforcements we've used four. One on the uh, single VIP wall. One in the middle of the exhibition triple wall. And two on the main breach or office wall here. That's four. Mute jammers. We want to put one all the way back over here on VIP single wall. We want to put one on the samurai window. In fact, no, we don't. We don't. I'm not going to do that. You can do that, but I'm not going to do it. One for the drone hole here. Make sure you put it this side of the wall so it's covered from getting shot. You know, if you put it here, it can be shot from the window or people can crouch in the drone or prone in the drone hole. One for the breach. Oh, let's put it in the middle, shall we? That's middle-ish. That's close enough here. And then one for the door here on the left into lounge. Just as a heads up on this site, uh, well, around this area of the map, there's two radios. There's your first one. There's the second one. Make sure we get rid of them. And a walkie-talkie as well, by the way. That needs going as well. Right, so we've got four mute jammers down. And what we're going to do in terms of lines of sights and rotates, we're going to make a voltable line, a uh, voltable rotate here. I don't know why I make it a voltable. I just always do. I sometimes reinforce this wall as well if we've got enough spare. And then we want to make one hole, just only a small one that side, so you can hold into here as well. Now, from here, at the start of the round, you're going to get people pushing house stairs quite a lot. So just hold this angle here passively. You don't want to give up your life straight away, but I guarantee you a knock crouch walks up here within 40 seconds of the round starting. Because for some reason, knock players are absolutely obsessed with entering through here in the side entrance. I don't even know what you call that door. I've just looked on the map and seen it's called side entrance. I don't even know what I call that. Closet door, maybe? Closet's the other side of there. I don't even know what I call that. But you get a knock that enters through there and starts going like this every time. And obviously you're just sat here going, oh, hi, mate. Free kill. Thanks very much. You want to try and stop anyone jumping through this window if you can. But again, you don't want to be holding the window aggressively. You just It's a problem to get you out of here. A real problem for the attackers. They can't come through the main breach. They can't come through the single wall unless they start using utility. And the idea of this is you want to try and get them to use an EMP or maybe even two EMPs. An ace charge or maybe two ace charges to, on this side of the map before they even get over anywhere near the bomb site. But they've got to clear you from here. The other line of sight that you want to make is these feet holes into Geisha, which everyone does these days anyway. Of course, reinforce Geisha wall. You, you've got to play Bandit Arcade on this side. Excuse me. You've got to play Bandit Arcade on this side and deny this wall. You can't give Geisha up for free. If you give Geisha up for free, you basically lost the round. So from here, you hold the east side of the map. You can hold the uh, Geisha hop in from here as well. Don't get me wrong. It's a bit of a nightmare with an SMG 11. 
Oh, that's rough, isn't it? Bit of a nightmare from here to hold that kind of angle. It's not easy to do. But the very fact that you're here will usually prevent someone from just jumping in Geisha window anyway. They know you've got to clear you out. So you just hold this side of the map. Again, a bit like border, a bit like night even. We're nowhere near the site, even further away from the site in this example. But attackers will need to take this side of the map. Otherwise, you just come back. That side of the map's fine. No worries. I know they're pushing from uh, black stairs or back stairs and Geisha. Okay, no problem. That side of the map's sound. We don't have to worry about that. You can come and play in drum. Hold Geisha. Don't die to Terrace Window. People do that all the time. Come charging down here. Oh, yeah, I'll go peek the drum feet holes and then just get absolutely smoked from someone holding there. You can come and play in here. Start barricading off if you want to as well. If you think that side of the map is safe. All right, well, I've barricaded that off. I don't need to worry about that anymore. And know if this barricade goes, there's someone there. And then just hold Geisha. But it's a, a really solid way of holding this side of the map. I also haven't done this, but I normally make a line of sight here as well. And if I need to, then from Dragon. You can hold into Terrace as well. But this, yeah, the, hold the uh, the east side. I normally ask for another player to come over as well, like an alibi or something, to try and help me, because depending on what elo you play in, it sort of high plat, mid-emerald and above, the attackers are going to take this side of the map on the way to taking that side. A lower elo, they'll probably just go straight for the site and not worry about this. But, um, yeah, holding this side of the map is, is crucial on Skyscraper. And finally, last but by no means least, we're on to Outback. Now, we're defending party and office here, and this is another great setup. This one is actually pretty much on, well, definitely on site. I know the others were off site, so I sort of lied in the thumbnail uh, title when I said five off site mute site setups, what I meant to say, but it doesn't quite have the same ring on YouTube, does it? Four off site mute setups and one on site mute site, it doesn't quite have the same ring. So forgive me for doing a little bit of clickbait by saying five. Because there's only four off-site, this one's on-site. So, this is a, fill, a full site setup, essentially. So, we've done seven reinforcements. One, two, three. Left this wall, not reinforced, and for good reason. We put a reinforcement here, and for good reason. Again, we'll go through that in a second. So, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and the right-hand side, seven. Rotates. You want one here into garage. One between the sites in the bottom right corner here. That's a bit rough, that, isn't it? I'm not proud of that. You want a line of sight down here. You can hold the stairs from here then as well. And then also here. And open the hatch while you're there as well. Now, the way you're going to play this is with the mute jammers on one on the breach. Ideally, you've got a bandit again because mute's just too easy to overcome for wall denial. Now, it's not his best feature. You've got one there. One here on the garage. You've then got one on the drone hole here, and this one's key. So many Flores, Bravo, Twitch drones come through this because that leads directly out to the breach. So muting that off is massive. And finally here... Now, I'm not a massive fan of using Muter's Wall Denial these days because he's just not as good. And if you if you have got a Bandit or Caden, you've got a fourth spare Mute Jammer, come and put it on this, on this other drone hole over here. Try and put it... Uh, you, it, it, it can be... What I'm trying to say, yeah, I still struggle with my words a little bit there. You can generally shoot this when you're prone. You can get a pixel on the handle sometimes. I might just have got away with putting that there. But try and put it, like, as close to the right-hand side of the door as you can without putting it, like... You know, you, you certainly don't want it like there. Do you know what I mean? You want to make sure it's as close as you can, but whilst it's still hidden a little bit from the door. That's ideal. So, the way you play this is entirely in party. So, entirely in here. So, you've made a line of sight there. What I also do as well is go prone. Look at where the door is for uh, the back of uh, games. Go prone and make an angled punch hole like this. And it just gives you a cheeky look. You're only going to be able to get away with this once. You might be able to get a quick kill that way. You're never, ever going to be able to repeat that. Make sure your line of sight goes up to the reinforcement. But what you've got to do early on is watch bull window. You don't want to be holding this angle, but people are going to be here fairly early on. And once they take games, you want to have these walls reinforced as well, by the way. But once they take games, you can tend to get a little bit more aggressive because they don't expect anyone pushing around this side. You've got to watch Top Shark and Barbecue area. What is that area actually called? Is it called Barbecue? Covered Terrace. I always call it Barbecue because it's a massive barbecue. Man. Covered Terrace, yeah. One covered Terrace doesn't quite roll off the tongue, does it? Um, so as long as you know that there's no one in Covered Terrace... <laughs> As long as you know there's no one barbecue slash top shark, you can get quite aggressive here because they don't expect anyone to be pushing around this way. 
But do, again, I'll, I say this all the time, and let me repeat this. On attack, uh, sorry, on defense, don't get overly aggressive. You are far more valuable to your team alive than trying to get a kill and die. So stay alive as long as you can. It's their job to push you. Yes, getting aggressive on defense works quite a lot of the time because you catch people unawares, but it also doesn't work a lot of the time, and you've kind of screwed your team over doing that. I'm a really passive player, I, especially on defense. I'll let the attackers push me. That's their job. So just bear in mind from here, angles you can hold. Behind the bomb here is a really nice one. You can go tight to the wall here and watch the running because no one ever looks hard right here. They'll hold the bomb. They'll go like this. Then they'll start looking this way, and you get a kill all the time. There's also a hop-up you can do if you want to onto here. So anyone pushing through ball. Once they get to this area, you can't quite see the window unless you don't reinforce this. Sometimes you can leave this unreinforced and then you can hold bull window from here, but you can't cover your head. You can still see your head over the top of it, so it's not overly safe. Um, but yeah, I like using this here to cover uh, office door. I really like playing here. It's just, it's good fun. You get a bit of aim lab training as well if you want to. But yeah, I know this is on site and the others are off site, but I really like doing it. And then you can uh, cover the window. You quite often you'll get someone trying to nade from the window, which is, you can just see the barricade there. So if you do see someone trying to nade from the window and hop in here, hurly doors, you'll get like the knock or the Iona trying to get, trying to get in here. Sorry, somebody, I moved away from the mic then. Somebody just came in the room behind me and made me jump. <laughs> this is not very professional, but there's no way I'm recording all of this again, so we're cracking on. So yeah, you can watch the jump in here from the knock or the Iona. You can grenade from the window, and you can still see out the window. If you open the... The barricade there if they were to open the barricade and try and nade up wait for them to open the barricade and then as they try and peek obviously don't get naded but you can try and put them off even if you don't get the kill but you just do this straight away and you let them know someone's watching it you've caused them more problems because now they've got to think of another way of getting the grenade to the bottom of here so yeah that's it five site setups Hope you enjoyed them. That's Outback. I really like playing Mute these days. The muzzle break on the SMG 11 is good. Thank you, Hard Baguette, for that. Shout out, Hard Baguette. Another really good Siege content creator. He's American, living in France, and he's an absolutely top follower. He's got a YouTube channel and a Twitch channel. He's a good friend of mine. Um, Twitch.tv forward slash Hard Baguette. The same on YouTube. I don't know why this has turned into a Hard Baguette dedication video, but just thought I'd shout him out. He, got, he started me using the muzzle break on the SMG 11, and I've never looked back, so yeah. And uh, yeah, that's out back. Enough waffling. I had enough of that. So there we have it. Five setups for Mute. Probably call them setups, not site setups, because it's not all on site, but I've talked about that already. You know what I mean? Really, really useful. Good ways of stopping attackers, getting control of other areas of the map. And look, it's not always easy to hold away from the site, usually on your own. You probably will die, but the idea is you get a kill or two along the way and you delay the attackers from getting that map control that they desperately need. I say it all the time and I'm going to carry on saying it now. This channel is nothing without people that watch it. So thank you very much. If you've got this far in the video, you're an absolute legend. Thank you for watching. All the links are below. So Twitch, Twitter, Patreon and all that good stuff. They're all below. If you want to get involved with anything, you can find them in the description below. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers!